So here we are with Jeffrey Levine of Buckingham Wealth Partners, and we're launching a new series. We call it Ask the Hammer. Jeffrey? Yes, sir. So in Ask the Hammer, we're going to pose to you questions from our readers about all things money. I love it. All right. Some tough, not some not so tough for you, but we'll start with maybe an easy one. All right. So, Let's do all right. Yeah. So, uh, a reader writes, I've been reading a lot of things about something called Reg BI. Um, what is it? What do I need to know about it as an average investor? Sure. So, uh, you know, we could probably spend an hour talking about Reg BI. And, but we're not. And frankly, financial <laughs> advice. Yeah, no, no, like, no, no one will ever watch again. Uh, you got three uh, minutes. And in fact, you know, financial advisors are spending hours preparing for this. Uh, in short, what Reg BI is, it's a, a new rule. Uh, in, in terms of code of conduct that financial professionals must adhere to when providing advice. Now, you may have heard in the past that the Department of Labor had a fiduciary rule. That was here. Uh, then it was kind of taken away. This is coming from the SEC. And now what it does is, it, it, and for the most part, it requires that professionals act in your best interest when dispensing advice. However, what it doesn't do is, is just as important as what it does and it does not make everyone a fiduciary. Uh, there still are key differences between the rules that individuals are subject to under Reg BI and being a true fiduciary all of the time. And so that doesn't mean that every single consumer needs to work with a fiduciary, but it does mean that if you're looking for someone who is legally obligated to always act in your best interest, you still need to do a fair bit of homework and make sure you're working with the right professional. Again, I, I don't have any um, anything bad to say about any of the different types of business models that there are in our business. Uh, some individuals are brokers, some individuals are advisors, some individuals provide only insurance solutions. The key is understanding, knowing what you're looking for, right? If you're looking for uh, some sort of insurance solution, then you may not need someone to be a fiduciary. You just need to find the best available product to fit your need. But if you're looking for true advice to guide you along, uh, you know, perhaps a, a lifetime's worth of financial decisions, then it's important to understand who you're going to, what sort of regulations they're subject to. And Reg BI will now likely be one of those regulations, but it is not, in my opinion at least, the end all and be all. Right, so I'm not gonna hold up the hammer and say you've nailed it just yet, because I do have a follow-up question, <laughs> sure. which is, it, to my way of thinking, you would never ask a doctor, when are you acting as a doctor to me and when are you not acting as a doctor? Or when are you acting as a dentist to me and when are you not acting as a dentist? But in a way, that's what we've done here, right? We've created a system where you may have to ask the advisor, when are you acting in my best interest? When are you acting as a fiduciary? Because there may be times when the same person could act in different roles. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. And, and frankly, it's been one of the things that uh, many, at least on the advisory side, have complained about loudest for years, is that the lines between the different types of jobs have been blurred. Uh, notably, uh, especially in the securities industry side of things, you've got brokers who are largely regulated by one act, and then you have advisors who are regulated by a separate law. And for many years, up until really now, it was important to have a distinction between the two. And, and obviously, you know, if you're a, a financial professional, it's, it's hard to market yourself as like, no, I don't have to pay attention to what's in your best interest. I can kind of do what, whatever, as long as it's okay for you or suitable. And so, uh, for years, people have kind of blurred those lines. And, you know, for instance, the title financial advisor, what does it mean? Nothing, right? At least now we're finally starting to get some regulation around that, some guidance. But for years, kind of anybody could call themselves a financial advisor, not a certified financial advisor. But, you know, I, I, the lines just become blurry. So this is why it goes back to really doing your due and what sort of uh, service you're looking for. Is it a, a product, which is fine. Um, or is it the advice to decide what you're trying to do? And then again, to understand how those individuals are, are regulated. 
do your homework, ask for referrals from friends, from family members. It's one of the best ways. You know, people always say, well, how do I know that I'm working with the right person? Perhaps one of the best ways is to talk with people who have worked with that person before, you know, other clients of that individual, asking friends, asking family members. Uh, unfortunately, money is still such a taboo subject in our society that people are more likely to talk about you know, who they met for a, a, you know, a one night stand than who they met with to discuss their finances. And that's just, it, it's not good. So we need to kind of remove the stigma surrounding money conversations. Doesn't mean you have to share everything about yourself with your neighbor, your, your parent, your brother, your sister. But if we just remove some of those barriers and allow people to have uh, a, a greater insight and ability to have these discussions in the first place, I think it would help a lot of people to find the right sort of financial professional. Yeah. So um, I know you said we could talk for hours about this subject and I still have thousands of more questions to ask you about it. But for now, I'm going to say that's a two hammer answer. Ooh, I like this two hammer <laughs> answer. Ding, ding. Two hammer answer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all, that's all the hammers I have. So that's as good as it's going to get for now. All right. I'm going to have to mail you some hammers. All right. Where, we got we to gotta get on the phone with a uh, hardware store, a local hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Thanks for answering a tough one for sure. Thanks, Bob.